Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with uh, the Heritage Pride Custom Firearms Channel. Uh, back on the Heritage Pride Homestead and uh, back to finally bring you guys video two of how to build a greenhouse. So uh, a lot has changed in the process of building this greenhouse. Uh, probably about three times or four times maybe. Uh, basically what you see behind me is the scalable structure of our greenhouse. Um, but if you've been back to some other videos and saw the uh, uh, homestead update and things like that that happened uh, that were produced after the first video for the greenhouse, you'll see that I had started constructing the framework for the greenhouse. Um, well, and then it turned into the foundation that we spent all that time and, and sweat on uh, getting put in ended up turning into a lumber stack. So, uh, you know, over the, my goal originally was to have the greenhouse done by like, um, you know, this past winter. Well, here it is spring, and uh, I'm just now getting back to the greenhouse. So, um, you know, anyway, it, it, stuff happens, we get busy, life happens, and it keeps us from, uh, from accomplishing some of our, our goals that aren't really necessity. Uh, and for us, it wasn't a necessity to have a greenhouse right away, so uh, our attention went to other places. Uh, but now, I'm kind of halfway caught up around the house. Spring is here. I can get back out. Um, work is still crazy busy. As a matter of fact, I'm about a month behind schedule, and it's not going to let up until probably August, it's looking like right now. So work is still really busy, which is a blessing uh, and a curse at the same time. Uh, but... Uh, it pays the bills, and uh, if I didn't have it, I'd be in worse shape than what I am now, so I'm thankful for the work. Um, but anyway, it just means lo longer days once I get home from work, uh, getting stuff, keeping stuff going here, and that's just the, the sacrifice that you make to uh, live on a homestead. And so there's always work to be done, and unfortunately, it doesn't always pay the bills. So... Um, Anyway, uh, this video is not really an update video. It's more of a uh, the skeletal structure of, of the greenhouse. And uh, I'll grab the camera and bring you guys in a little bit closer here in a few minutes. But basically, let me talk about what the changes are. Uh, in the first video, the foundation video, we went through with our transit level and we dug out for the, uh, for the footer system. And in the footer system, we decided to use uh, landscape timbers. It's a cheap way uh, to put in a footer system that, that's pretty solid and it's going to last for a long time. It'll probably outlast me, so plenty long enough. Um, and then the, the theory or the, the original plan was to construct four framed walls and I've got some uh, glass panels that were old sliding glass doors. I was going to use those in it, put a carbon, uh, polycarbonate roof on it, and so on and so forth. Um, and like I said, our necessity wasn't a greenhouse at, at the time so it got put on the side burner and I'm kind of glad it did because once I got to thinking about it it was going to cost me quite a bit just you know in the materials and uh, it was going to take a lot more time than I had time to construct so it got put on the side became a lumber stack once it started getting uh, halfway decent weather better weather I came out, I decided to clear it all off. So I, I tore the two frame walls that I had constructed down. I, uh, I cleared all the lumber out of there and I had it stacked out in the yard until here recently. Cleared it all out and, and idea number two arose which was to construct two raised beds um, out of the railroad ties. Because once again they're sturdy and they're cheap. Uh, I was going to build two raised beds and leave a walkway in between. So that was option number, or idea number two. I constructed the one race bed, ran out of railroad ties, and uh, didn't have the railroad ties to finish it, so I stopped where I was at. And I thought, well, I'll get some more railroad ties when I get a chance, and once I do, I'll construct the second bed. Well, then I got, uh, this weekend, I was planning on constructing the second bed. And I got to thinking that I would love, 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 it's just, Something that I, I kind of really want to do is do some hydroponics. 
maybe some aquaponics, but definitely hydroponics. Uh, I've been reading a book. It's called uh, Backyard Homesteading, and another book, um, Life as an Urban Homesteader. And uh, I don't remember the author to each one of them, but I'm sure they're on Amazon. Uh, I've been reading some books, and, and they've got a section in there about uh, hydroponics, aquaponics, and uh, DWC, which is deep water culture. Um, and it's very interesting to me. I've always kind of been interested in it, but um, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to do it around here. I just, you know, it's one of those things. It is, you know, it's a little pricey getting it going. I guess there's a lot involved and uh, I was on YouTube looking around and I found a video um, by uh, I think it's MH Gardner uh, I can't remember the name uh, I'll, I'll post it in the description below when I go through and edit this dudes dudes awesome super simple backwoods dude just just keeping it simple um, and he's got a little hydroponic set up really neat and I think I'm gonna mock my hydroponic setup after his and so if I do that minimal cost and I'll still get to do the the hydroponics well in order to do the hydroponics I really wanted to have something with a roof over it to keep the rain off of it but still be able to get sunshine so I've got a little area here and I thought about putting up some 4x4 posts and just building like a, a lean-to roof over it with polycarbonate just to keep the weather off of it but still let sunlight in and then build me a long table under it and I thought you know what I've got a foundation already set why don't I construct some kind of greenhouse so back to the original plan of building a greenhouse so I uh, came up with a hoop house idea and so my original greenhouse although it this is not the same it's still how to build a greenhouse and so now we're how to build a greenhouse slash hoop house with our timber, uh, railroad timber footer construction. So uh, let me grab the camera, I'll bring you in, show you what I did, uh, kind of up close a little bit and show you the materials I used. Right now, all in all, railroad timbers and the materials for the hoops, for the skeletal frame, I probably have about uh, 150 to 160 bucks in it. And you could save the money and not have that much in it, but I'm pretty impatient, and I don't like to spend my, with my business, my time is money, and so I know that sounds cliche, but it really is. And so for me to take the time to go out and scrounge the materials and barter and all this other stuff, I just don't have time to do that. So I just went and bought everything. And so, like I said, I've got about 150, 160 bucks in what you see here. And when it's all said and done for the greenhouse itself, I will probably have in the neighborhood of about 250 to 300 dollars in it. So it's not real expensive, and it's going to be pretty sturdy, I think. I'm confident in it. So anyway, like I said, let me grab. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to do this. I'm hoping the wind isn't going to be too bad in this video. It's not blowing a whole lot today, but uh, it is a little bit of a breeze. So um, hopefully it won't be too bad. And the sun is, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, I'd say. And the sun's starting to set. And uh, so anyway, it might be in the background a little bit. I'm going to try to keep the glare down. So you can look at the, uh, the, the timber frame construction of the railroad timbers. Um, you know, originally we had the first row down. And if you didn't see that video... Uh, go back and watch it because I talk about how to use a transit or a level or a line level depending on what you have available to get a level foundation. So if you stand back here and look at this, even though my yard slopes a little bit and you see the chain link right there is a good, see if I can get that sun out of there, the chain link back there is a good uh, example of the slope of the back of the yard because the chain link just follows the yard. Um, so we leveled up our footer system of the railroad ties and then that gives us a level system to build on top of. Um, so what I did first was I constructed that back box. I just added basically two layers of railroad timbers and that gave us that back box back there. Now like I said my original or my secondary plan was to construct this box then I was going to leave a small walkway right here and construct another box here. Now I know 
people out there are gonna gig me on this. You're not supposed to use railroad timbers for grow beds because the chemicals they use to treat the uh, the um, the railroad timbers. That's what I've heard. Um, I haven't really read anything about it, but I've heard it. Uh, it's probably true, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. I see tons of people doing it, um, and they're not dead or have cancer yet. So we're going to go that route for now. Now, I'm not saying it is the way to do it. Um, if you want to play it safe, probably don't. I actually thought about, uh, you know, l lining this thing with plastic and then going that route. But um, these railroad timbers have been out in the weather for many, many years. I would say most of the chemicals that are in them are gone by this point. If they were brand new railroad timbers just dipped, then... Uh, I would be more lenient about it or more hesitant about it, I guess. But these have been weathered for so long, I would say the majority of the chemicals have leached out by now. They still have a little bit of a smell, but they smell more like a little like tar. So, um, And that's good. That keeps them from rotting. So anyway, we still have this bed back here. So this bed will still be in the greenhouse as a dry bed or, or a dirt bed, a soil bed. Uh, you know, obviously hydroponics, aquaponics, no dirt involved. So we'll still have a dirt bed inside the greenhouse. But so what I did after I had that one constructed, I wanted to make a level kind of playing field here. So I just added two layers of the railroad ties around, left me a little opening here for a door uh, where the door would be, and then continued it on. So now so for the skeletal so frame of the actual hoop house. Um, this is where I have the upper hand on about 9 out of 10 of these homemade hoop houses that I've seen made out of a, a plastic material. Um, and this is where my contractor knowledge comes in a little bit. 9 out of 10 of them that I looked at were made out of regular PVC plumbing pipe. PVC plumbing pipe, one is expensive, and two is not UV protected. Um, so in other words, sets out in the sun, it's gonna get brittle. It just absorbs those UVs and gets really, really brittle and it'll snap like crazy. Um, that's why you don't see PVC pipe uh, just ran across the top of the ground pressurized. Uh, it has to be buried or it has to be underneath a structure um, out of the UV rays because it will get brittle in the weather and it will break and it will do so very quickly. It's not something that will happen over the course of five or six years. It's something that will happen in the course of a year or two. Um, it will happen quick. Uh, and like I said, it's expensive. A one inch stick of PVC pipe, 10 foot long, is going to run you here about a uh, anywhere from eight to ten dollars. What I have used is one inch plastic electrical conduit, PVC conduit. All right, still PVC, but it's UV protected. It's three dollars a stick, one inch by ten foot. Three dollars a stick as opposed to, let's say, ten dollars a stick. All right, so significant amount of savings there. And here's the kicker. It is UV protected. It will not get brittle in the sun. As a matter of fact, it will be ideal for the hoop house because the sun heats it up and softens it. And then in, at night, when it gets, it doesn't soften it to the extent that it'll like just deform and collapse. It will soften it to the point, in theory, that it will form itself. And then at night, when it cools off, it'll harden back up. And it'll form itself so there's not this tension on it right now. So right now, there's tension on it because I just built it. So it's got that stress or that pressure from all the flexing. And in theory, once it heats up and cools down, it'll form to the arch so that there's not all that tension on it all the time. We used to do it all the time when I worked as an electrical contractor. Instead of buying a bunch of 90s, sweep 90s, to put on it to pull wire through it easier, we would run it through this heater and it would heat it up 
to the point where it was like jello sort of and you flex it to wherever you want it and then let it cool and it hardens back to its hardness and then you've got an elbow so the same theory in my mind would it would work for this as well another thing is most people that i saw was using three quarter inch conduit and i thought to myself that seems super flimsy like i don't know about the stability of that now it worked for them um and i've saw read a couple of comments where the snow load wasn't great on it um at one time it collapsed so I, i'm hoping by using the one inch that it'll make it sturdier it seems pretty sturdy right now like i mean it's i mean it's solid i mean it, it flexes like a hoop house but a plastic hoop house would but it's it's sturdy so what i did in the short of it is I, I went along the edge on both sides and I drilled me some holes, some pilot holes, and I used half inch rebar, cut me some half inch rebar stakes, I drove them into the wood, and then I just bent them over a little bit. Just put a slight cant on them. Then I took my uh, pipe and uh, we just kind of dry fit it to see what how high of an arch I wanted, how much head space, and I found the center um, and cut a little bit off each side of it because I wanted my coupling the uh, another advantage to the uh, 10 foot sticks of uh, the electrical conduit you don't have to buy couplings it comes one end is swelled so that it receives a smaller end so you just slide them together and I wanted that to be dead center so that I could run a ridge pole and make a joint there to keep them from pulling apart there's no glue in this that way if anything does ever break or anything like that it's a matter of unbolting a few bolts and replacing a piece of pipe um, nothing is glued nothing is attached to the the wood itself like i said that way if it breaks i can replace it out so i took it and cut the same amount off either side after i put two sticks together i had a 20 foot straight shot i cut 21 inches off this side 21 inches off this side won't always be the same it depends on your application but i made it even so that my coupling would be in the center of the ridge so i put that together uh, arched them on each piece of rebar all the way across i think they're on like a 33 and three quarter inch centers and that was so that uh, it would be equal equal amount all the way down through here then i used a piece of inch and a half and made a ridge pole same thing two pieces of it um, and I centered it up so that the coupling on it would fall between two of the uh, two of the hoops so that way you wouldn't have a, a high spot and once again you can separate it if you need to and for whatever reason if that ridge pole was to ever give out you know you could take that out so I took a that's an inch and a half piece there and then um, lined it up, cut it off even, leveled everything up, and then just bored a hole through it. I used some uh, 3 8 bolts, carriage bolts. The uh, reason why I use the carriage bolts is so that the, the end would be round. So when we put our plastic over here, it won't be sharp and tear a hole in the plastic. All right, so we got a ridge pole in the center. And then I put two side, side ridges or side supports in. I just used the one inch pipe. All right, same thing, two sticks put them together cut them off to the length of the of the house and then same thing marked them all mark the spacing board a hole 3 8 inch bolt uh, carriage bolt on both sides so super simple construction I mean there's nothing hard about this if you've got a drill and a hammer uh, and a socket set or a wrench for that matter you can build this hoop it's super easy um, and like I said, in theory, it should last. Uh, it should hold up to anything, and it should last. So, anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. This is a super long video for something so simple. But I just wanted to get you guys up to date since the, the course of action on the design of the greenhouse has changed. I wanted to um, just kind of elaborate on a few things. Uh, but super simple construction, super cheap. Uh, easy to build so that's it for the skeletal part of the hoop house or the greenhouse um, 
the second part or the next part the third video is going to be on the end framing in wall framing um, you've got to close off uh, the front here and you've got to close off that back so uh, the third video probably going to be next weekend hopefully if I can get to it next weekend um, the next video will be framing the front and back wall um, and we're just going to use two by fours for that I'm going to show you how to get your arches how to meet how to match your arch and how we're going to attach it to our, our footer system our foundation system um, and we'll be installing a uh, attic exhaust fan in the gable end so that we can draw the heat out of it if it gets too hot during the summer um, so anyway guys that's it for this video uh, if you didn't see the footer system and you're interested on how to get it leveled up uh, for your yard or your location wherever you're building it uh, I'll put the link in the description below for video one and um, you can go back and check it out Otherwise, uh, I appreciate the subscriptions. We're getting close to 10,000. And I'm super thankful for that, uh, especially considering the fact that I haven't been posting videos as regular as I used to. Um, I do have a couple more videos that will be popping up. Uh, if you're interested, you can keep a lookout for those. Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, an, another uh, the Heritage Pride Gun Shop construction video. Got one of those getting ready to go up, and I've got I'm gonna do a uh, urban homestead update video here pretty soon, uh, just to get you guys updated with where we're at on the homestead here. Uh, so anyway, guys, uh, if you if you find this helpful, uh, I appreciate the likes. Um, also, uh, I appreciate the subscriptions. Uh, anyway, until next time, guys, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later. Ha 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 ha!